This is a video about how free will is a complete impossibility due to the fact that God has foreknowledge of everything that will happen. Psalm 147 says that God's understanding is infinite. Therefore, God understands everything that will happen in the future. And it's very important that we understand that this is not simply God knowing what would happen in any given circumstance that might come about in the future, but this is God actually knowing what will happen. So, would and will are two different words in the English language, and they mean different things. And uh, for the Molinists who are listening, we you need to understand that God doesn't just know what would happen in any given given situation, he knows something that's also very different, which is what will happen. And um, the fact that God knows with absolute certainty what will happen in the future means that everything that you do must have occurred and taken place because of what God knew about it. You could not have done otherwise. Everything you've done in your life, you could not have done otherwise unless God had decided that he would know something else. But when it comes to his foreknowledge and what he knows, you could not have done otherwise because God knew that you would do everything that you have done. So knowledge is justified true belief. And so when you believe something to be true and it is true and you're justified in it, that's knowledge. And of course, God's mind doesn't work the exact way that ours does. But if God knows something, that means if he knows that a proposition about what will happen is true, then it must happen. It, there's no, there's no uh, probability there because he knows that it's true. It's a true proposition. And the proposition involves the word will. This will happen. This person will do this. So when that proposition of what will happen is known by God to be, when he, when he knows the proposition, this will happen, then it must be true because he knows it. Knowledge requires that what you know is true. Knowledge requires believing something that's true. So, there's no such thing as knowledge of some that's like uncertain in some aspect to some degree. Like, if you know something to be true, then then it's true. If you, if it's not true, then you don't know it. As soon as you use the word knowledge, whatever you're knowing, it must be true because you use the word knowledge. If you don't think, if there's, a, there's a, if there's a possibility that it couldn't be true, then you can't use the word knowledge. Um, so, when God, when God knows what you will eat for breakfast tomorrow with absolute certainty, that means you must eat that certain thing that he knows you will eat, and you cannot possibly eat something different. If God has decided that you will eat Pop-Tarts tomorrow, and let's not even get into um, uh, de determinism. People get all caught up in determinism, but in this conversation, we don't even have to talk about determinism and God determining things. All we have to talk about is what he knows. If God knows that you will eat Pop-Tarts tomorrow morning for breakfast, then you must eat Pop-Tarts. If you ended up eating something different than Pop-Tarts, then God wouldn't have known that you would eat Pop-Tarts. <sighs> if God knows that you're going to go to the grocery store tomorrow, you must go to the grocery store. You can't possibly not go to the grocery store because he's known it beforehand. And what you do never influences the mind of God. God is uh, immutable. He doesn't change. And he never learns anything because he's all, he always has, all, he has always known everything about everything. So God never receives information from us. He never learns from us. He's not 
um, looking into the future, receiving information from our actions. He has foreknowledge. The Bible speaks of foreknowledge. His knowledge, therefore, the knowledge must, in some aspect, come before. And when it comes before, we even come into existence, then that knowledge cannot be influenced by our actions. Because so, because people come, they res, they resort to this very absurd comeback to this argument where they're like, oh well, if I had decided. If I decided to eat Cheerios instead of Pop Tarts, then God would have known that I would have eaten Cheerios. He would have known that I would eat Cheerios if I had decided I didn't have to choose the Pop Tarts. I could have chosen Cheerios, and then God would have known that I would have eaten the Cheerios. But what this does is basically make God's knowledge dependent on what you do. When that knowledge has always existed for eternity before you ever existed. And what you're actually asserting with that argument is that something that comes into existence after something else can determine the nature of the thing that existed before it existed, which is just completely nonsensical and absurd. Something like us that comes into existence after the existence of the foreknowledge of God, which has always existed, cannot possibly determine the nature of the foreknowledge of God. It's always existed. There was never any change in it. God has always known. If he's if he knows that you're going to eat pop tarts tomorrow, he's always known that, and it could never, it it, it never changed. And there was nothing that you ever did or ever could do to make that change. You came at, you came into existence after his knowledge exists. It always exists. And you came into existence at a certain point, but his knowledge is eternal. The, it, the finite, time-bound thing that comes into existence cannot possibly influence and determine the nature of this eternal foreknowledge. So, that's just a horrible argument. It's just terribly illogical, and yet people think that it's actually a good argument. But um, please never use that argument. And we, we have to recognize that you don't... There, there is your life seen by God. He knows everything about every second of what will happen in your life. And therefore... You must do everything that he sees beforehand. It's all seen beforehand, and it's they're all certain things. It's not just different things that could happen. It's not um, plan B. What will happen is just a certain thing, and that's the thing you got to do. It's going to happen. You don't have a choice. You you do not have a choice when God knows every single single thing that you will do. Not that you would do in a certain circumstance, but what you will do. There's a lot of woulds that could happen if God had decided that they would happen. But we're not talking about what would happen in any given circumstance. We're talking about what will happen. Very different. And this is a great time right now if you have been leaving if you have been believing in libertarian free will, thinking that you can actually do otherwise than this certain string of events that God has always known, um, you need to get rid of that false thinking and start loving God with all of your mind and choose, and you should choose to believe the truth. The, the Bible says that love rejoices with the truth. So when you hear someone tell you the truth about something, you should embrace the truth instead of rejecting it because it, if, you, if you feel like you want to reject it, you might feel like you want to reject it because it's offensive to your emotions. You might be emotionally tied to a certain belief system about free will. But when you, if you can comprehend this, if you can understand it, and you see it to be true, you have to believe the truth. Jesus is the truth. 
Jesus cares about truth. If you love Jesus, you're going to care about truth. So uh, I encourage you to recognize that something that comes into existence after something else that exists cannot possibly determine the nature of the prior existing thing. And if you think that it can, you'd have to explain that because that is just utter nonsense to say such a thing. Trying to explain it would be folly. But if anybody wants to try to explain it, they can try to explain it to me. But I don't know how you could possibly have any action or any person come into existence at a later time after this previously existing foreknowledge and then the thing that comes after somehow determines what what it, it, what the contents of the foreknowledge is it, it can't it can't determine what the, the it can't determine what the contents of the foreknowledge is because it doesn't exist yet something that doesn't exist can't do anything that's basically what i'm saying you didn't always exist so when you do come into existence you can't do something that could change what's already always existed. And you couldn't have changed it back when you didn't exist. When it when God's foreknowledge existed. So, things that don't exist can't do anything. When you don't exist, you can't do anything. And you can't change God's foreknowledge and determine his foreknowledge or influence his foreknowledge. You can't do anything when you don't exist. It's very simple. And if you do think that that people can do things when they don't exist, um, you've got a real problem on your hands. You've embraced a massive absurdity. And I encourage you to get rid of that if, if that's what you're currently believing. So, that's the video.